Welcome back to the Leeds United career mode. Today we will be heading into the January transfer window. But I need your feedback first as to which of the options we currently have on the shortlist that we go for. So the plan is at this particular moment in time, today we won't be signing anyone, but we may well end up selling someone. It depends on what bids come in. Uh, and then we'll wait and see what you guys reckon with regards to an incoming for the left back position. We are looking to definitively sign a left back in this transfer window. We'll wait and see what you guys say, say with regards to the centre mid position for Gruev at the moment. He's holding it down. He's 74 rated. I don't know what to do about that at this stage. We've got a number of youngsters that are going to go out on loan, which includes actually Ethan Donnelly. So we'll put uh, Anthony on the bench. Ethan Donnelly is going to go out on loan. Mateo Joseph's going out on loan. Sonny Perkins and Montero are going out on loan. Clairson's going to Ipswich. So the squad is going to be quite thin on the ground. We might need to look to make some incoming loans of our own in due course just to make sure we've got numbers for the rest of the season. So at present, options on my shortlist for left back include Amar Dedic, who can play at left back in his position set already. Only a three star weak foot though. Quick, good stamina. Not amazing technically, but decent. Rico Lewis would be a loan, not a buy. And I don't know if City would actually let me loan him, to be honest. Terraciano from AC Milan would also be a loan, not a buy. Four star weak foot for him, three star weak foot for Rico Lewis. So they are some potentials there. With regards to players that already play at left back, we have. Maxime de Kuiper, who's currently at Club Bruges. They are in Europe, I believe. It does look quite well-rounded, actually. De Kuiper looks like a decent option for sure. Then there's Bjorn Meyer, also at Bruges. So they're actually, they're two starting, or not two starting, they're two competing left-backs. Bjorn Meyer, slightly taller, slightly more physical, not as fast, and not as good technically either, to be fair. But there's only one difference in their rating. And he's three years younger as well. I don't think either of them have their in-game faces, do they? Let's see. No, not really. Uh, there is uh, Gase Small. Or Gase Small. At uh, FC Twente in the, in the Netherlands. Again, good technically. Very good in the tackle. Slide tackle at least. 84 crossings. Quite intriguing too. Only a two-star weak foot, but he's left-footed, so he should be fine. Then there's Atuyen Trufer, who's a left-back and left-mid at Stade René. Slightly higher-rated option. Not sure about that. Kai Wagner really intrigues me. Four playstyles, jockey, intercepts, technical, and relentless. Is fast enough. 90 stamina, as well as uh, 81 jumping at six foot. Could probably be utilised at centre-back two, if needs be. Technically... Decent crossing, okay in the past. High defensive awareness of 79, which could be key. And tackling is mid to late 70s as well. So Kai Wagner is also a potential favourite. Kirkes was mentioned in the comment section. He was a summer signing for Bournemouth, so we won't. There's Bradley Locco, who's at Stade at the minute. He's kind of a middle ground option, but only 21. Josh Doig was mentioned in the comment section, but he's a... January real life transfer to Sassuolo, one that we made coming into this save, so uh, we won't be able to go for him. And then there's another loan option potentially Andrea Cambiasso at Juventus. Decent pace, decent technically, better in the cross than he is in the tackle or the pass, but an okay option and has his in game face as well, if that's a factor that would impact it for you. So they're the, number, they're the options I've got on my shortlist at the minute with regards to left back. Numbers wise, financially, we have about 23 million. So we've enough to be able to buy or loan anyone that we've got on this shortlist at present, at this present moment in time. With regards to the, uh, the league table, one point off top, level on points with third place, less than four points clear of fourth place Southampton. And the games we have today will be playing Plymouth, playing Watford, playing Bristol City, and then hopefully deciding what else happens from there but everyone we've got going out on loan will know go out on loan and this is the confirmation that Joe Roden is now a permanent signing at the club although we did that a couple of episodes ago 
So quite happy with that. Lots of... Uh, ah, Anthony recalled. Robert's recalled. We are going to need some loan incomings or certainly to uh, get that left back signing in sooner rather than later. We have a thin squad. There's still 40 players on the uh, books, but only... 18, 19, to only 21 of them actually at the club. And we may end up having some players get sold in this upcoming transfer window as well. Cooper's going to run out of contract. I'm letting him go. Dallas is going to run out of contract. I'm letting him go. We'll wait and see what happens throughout the rest of the window. If we have any financial things to consider with regards to bids for our players, then we will do so. We have a bid, loan bid for... Uh, Goddard, which I'm happy to accept, a short-term loan. And then we could look for a long-term loan somewhere slightly better than Wuhan, to be completely honest, moving forward for next season. But right now, we're not moving any further forward. Timeline-wise, we're going into a game. It's Leeds versus Plymouth to kick us off today. They are one of the three sides that came up from League One last year. They are the best-performing side that came up from League One last year, but they're still not great. A 5-2-3 for them. We'll look for the dub. It's given away, is it? No, Randall does get there. Then ultimately it's given away. Kiro back in the starting lineup for this one after sitting out a couple of games. Patrick Bamford had a little, little spate of scoring goals again, but Kiro came off the bench and got the goal back for us against Leicester in the last episode, but obviously wasn't able to help us turn that result around. This Monday's video, of course. So hopefully you guys had a good weekend. Hopefully your team won at the weekend. Unless, as ever, your team is the team that's playing against Cambridge United this weekend. In which case, I hope you bloody well lost. Any Carlisle fans out there? Fingers crossed. Cambridge get three points this weekend. Fingers crossed Leeds United can get three points here. But Plymouth having a nice spell of possession. And then, unfortunately for them, giving it away. And I've given it straight back to them. And Ryan Hardy, thankfully... Doesn't make me pay for that. First chance comes, first chance goes for the Argyle. Bali Mumba playing a left wing for them. He's one name that has come up as an option to potentially sign for, for left back as well. But I don't really know as he's really of the quality, the calibre that we're looking for, really. Uh, Somerville is one of the players that I'm ex an anticipating, expecting some bids for in this window. But no one's bid for any of my players yet. And no one's really shown any interest throughout the course of the season so far. So I'm hoping to hold on to everyone that we've got and be able to crack on towards, fingers crossed, a promotion to the Premier League next season. Middlesbrough, all big game. You can't quite see it because my face is in the way. But Middlesbrough are playing Southampton on this particular match day. And Middlesbrough have taken a 1-0 lead in that game. So that's going to have a massive impact on Southampton's attempts to try and get automatic promotion and or win the title if they lose that to Middlesbrough. They're already five points behind at the top. And with the, see that gap grow to eight if that result comes through as it currently is would mean that we wouldn't be able to go above Middlesbrough either regardless of a victory here against Plymouth if we're able to get it at the moment. Struggling to break them down and they've got a free kick in a very promising position here. Morgan Whitaker looks like he's just going to dink it which indeed he does and Gruev will help us get rid of it. Junior Furpo gets that to Nonto looking for Somerville but it's an absolutely dead pass from Wilfred. Not what we needed there mate. I'm struggling against Plymouth. Hopefully we can get a nice spell of possession sooner rather than later. Only a 0.6 xg for them. They might have had a few chances but none of them have actually been any good. Roden, cross to Archie Gray. Barley Mamba's coming. Oh! Barley Mamba arrived. Barley Mamba might be gone. That was pretty strong from Mr. Mamba. Not necessarily putting himself, it's a yellow card, in the, uh, the window for him to be welcomed to the club. I don't wonder what the fans might think after that challenge if we then went and bought Barley Mamba. I mean, look, sorry about that last week. I do apologise. How highly rated is Barley Mumba? Oh my god, I've just seen that in the background. Do you see that? He caught him. That's a red. I'm so I'm sorry. That is a red card. What's this from Barley Mumba? He catch him in the calf. 
That's a red card. Oh my god. How has he gotten away with a yellow for that? That's horrendous. I'm not I am not gonna buy Barley Mumba purely on the basis of that challenge. Son of a bitch. It's Randall. Scott Randall, isn't it? I always think it's Adam Randall, and then it turns out to be Scott Randall. Now's the one time I catch myself making that mistake and then end up it is actually Adam Randall. Somerville looking for Piro. Somerville coming again. Gale Hart's there. Do I go for the extra pass? I will. Nomto. Goal for Leeds United. It's taken a while. But in the 59th minute, Wilfred Nomto gives us the lead. Lovely move. Vamos. They do step quite well, Plymouth, actually. They get out to you quickly. They don't have much time on the ball whenever you get it. It's not a, a big press as such. They're not pressing high. It's more of a mid-block than anything else, but... It's working to an extent. Anyway, they have conceded one. They are losing, but you know what I mean. It is working well, apart from that one time it didn't. It's loose. It's really poor from them. Can't give the ball away like that. Not with the quality of play that we have to go and punish you. Nonto's already gotten one. Nonto will have two. Tidily placed in that far bottom corner. That was really nicely put away. Leeds United 2, Plymouth nil. We are going to get the three points here. Wide here to Edwards. Back into Randall. Kamara's a player I just haven't used. Haven't all oh, finished from Ryan Hardy. All right. Nervy final few then maybe perhaps. So I have to keep the ball away from them. Kamara at CDM is a player that fills the squad. Is a new signing in real life. But I didn't click with him in CDM. I just haven't enjoyed Kamara. So whilst he will stay at the club for now because... He's a new signing and I won't sell someone that's just signed for the club. At least that's not my intention anyway. If someone comes in for him, then maybe. But I'm not going to actively look to sell him. At the same time, I'm not going to actively look to play him either. I do have some... To be fair, with the squad numbers, I do have some players I could recall from loan. Not necessarily those that are the higher rated that went out because they didn't want to be at the club in the championship. But those on developmental loans, like Darko Gabby, who've been away for a little bit, I could call those guys back. Those that are slightly higher rated than the ones that we've sent out on loan in this January window. Win that header, please. Well, Archie, great. That should be three points for the Leeds United here today, then. Keep us at least second in the table. Haven't seen any other changes to the Southampton Middlesbrough results. So as far as I'm aware, it's still... 1-0 at the Riverside. It might be 3-1 here soon. Dan James can find the pass, which he does. Hazard makes the save. Or Hazard. Not sure what his nationality is, actually, the goalkeeper. Nonto will deliver. He's got a couple of goals. Can he get an assist? No. We maybe get him a hat-trick if he can go on a mazy run into the box here. Also, no. We can get three points, even if Nonto's not going to get three goals. A good start. Now let's go and beat Watford in the Cup. Southampton actually turned that around. We said last we saw it was Middlesbrough 1, Southampton 0. That's changed. That win then will put us top of the table. We lead the league by six goals and zero points. Middlesbrough then in third. And that win for Southampton keeps them very much in the title fight. If Middlesbrough had won it, Southampton would be significantly behind. But... It's still very much now, with nine points to get from Southampton to uh, Watford in fifth. Very much a four-way fight. And it is Watford we have next, which means they're going to be half decent. But we are going to look to uh, Sheffield United have bid for Ampadu. I'm happy enough to turn that down for Sheffield United. I think we stand a good chance of getting to the Premier League. And I think Ampadu would rather help us do that than move to Sheffield United and probably get relegated with them instead. So we'll keep Ampadu here for that bid. So we might need to make some changes for this one. We will indeed make some changes for the uh, FA Cup with Watford then, based on stamina. Their players not fully fit either, but that's the side they're going to line up with. So we'll probably look to nail the right-hand side of their defence, because that's where they've got... Well, to be fair, they've got fatigue everywhere in defence, other than left-back, haven't they? All right. Fresh front three, though, so that's certainly something to take into account. I have to make sure that my defence is as fit as it possibly can be. 
Oh good, we've got a Minecraft pitch again. It will fix itself at some point throughout the game, but here at Vicarage Road at the moment, they've built a very square ground with some very strange shadows on it. We've won the ball back off them immediately, and then given it straight back to them again, so that's a good start. Made a couple of changes for stamina, as you will have seen on the way in. Shackleton playing at left back. Ngeki is forward here at right back for them, but we know he's running low on stamina. Deli Bashiru draws the save, but Hurtado's there on the follow-up, and Watford take a 1-0 lead. We'll go to Ruter. Here comes Shackleton. Actually, go to Ruter again, who's in. If that had been a through ball and played in front of him, he might have had a better chance, but he's in and doesn't score. Should have buried that. Jotinho should have buried that, pal. He might have another go, maybe an assist. It's Gruev. Somerville, it's going to fall to. And Padu's there. One, two, three, four, five, six. Goal. Yes! Ha <laughs> ha! One, one! In front of the travelling fans. No power on that shot whatsoever. But put in the square inch where the goalkeeper couldn't get to it. And it had to be that square inch. Terrible marking, if we're honest, but... Such is life with this video game the past couple of years. Really, really accurate finish. Keeper had just taken a step to his right, to be fair, which helped. Daniel Bachman can't get there. 1-1 one, one in the FA Cup. Oh, Mateus. That was nice. Runners all around. Could go for goal. Kone. Hurtado. Good save. Melier. Thought about playing Carl Darlow in this one, actually. He's been screaming at me to get some first-team football. That was meant to go to Somerville. <sighs> Don't score. Please. Thank you. And Badu, they won't score. Yeah, Kyle Dyle has been screaming at me to get some first team football, but millier has been so good this season. I can't really justify dropping him for anything, really. Plus, I need to get to the round of 16 of this competition. And I'm not sure Kyle Dyle is going to help me do that. Not that Melier really did well enough for their goal. Just kind of palmed it back into a danger zone. But we're level again. And Somerville's on a hell of a run, but unfortunately that comes to an end before I can find a pass or shot. Half an hour in, it's a competitive game here in the FA Cup. He can't figure out which way he wants to go here at the moment, Morris. Bloody hell. Had him running rings around himself. It's Morris again. Into Mateus. He forgot the ball. Left it for a teammate, actually, to play the ball to Morris, and that's worked brilliantly for them. Shackleton's up to nod it away. Might work in our favour for a counter-attack, that. Ruta. Come on, Crescencio, off you go. We know you love a counter-attack, pal. Geller in his stride well. And through the gap. Joe Geller, get it back on his left. Because then he'll tuck it away. Watford 1, Leeds United 2. We take the advantage in the FA Cup. The board want the round of 16, so it is imperative we get through to maintain our manager favour. We might just do that now. Hart wins that back. He's gone, Joe, you know. Oh, lovely. Joe Geller, all the way. Oh, desperately unlucky. What a goal that would have been. Ampadu, Gruev. Only one side looks like winning this game now, doesn't it? We are knocking on that door. A third might well come. And if it does, that's game over for Watford. Deli Bashiru. Mate oh, what a spin. Mateus, strike. Keeper probably should have done better with it. It wasn't necessarily in the corner, but Watford make it 2-2. And might they just force a replay here? Speaking of replays, it's a lovely turn. I want to have a look at this. Is it another case of goalkeeper should have saved it because it was right at him and he moved himself out of the way? Mm, might well have been. Win that header. Well up. And Padu, that was meant for Dan James. Get it to him this time. I'll look for Ruter first. What an interception, Jake Livermore. My God. Turned into Peter Crouch for a minute. With a length of leg there. Deli Bashir on the run. Cresswell steps in. Could be a counter now. Could be a really dangerous one. Ruter's rather fucking slow on the uptake, though. It's like, oh, we're counter-attacking. Yeah, mate. Jesus Christ, he went for me there. Emmanuel Dennis off the bench for them now. On loan from Forest, Emmanuel Dennis this season. 
Watford might win it, you know. They might not. Watford might lose it, you know. They really could. Dan James. No, oh, run straight into Portis. It's going to be a replay or a defeat, isn't it, now? Yep, needed to win that tackle. Standing chance of winning it. Morris. It's two minutes added on here. Deli Bashiru. Tom Ince. Pascal Strout does well. That'll be... Oh, actually, there might be. If Rutea runs for me, there could be... Oh, it could be time here. And he's in and he's on. Jorginho Rutea wins it for Leeds. In the 93rd minute, we get the result. Called up to the first team this time around after asking for football after being dropped. And he's taken the opportunity. Jorginho Rutea makes it 3-2 Leeds United with a brace as well. Joe Geller heavily involved again with the assist. And he couldn't miss from there, surely. Buried really nicely. Had his choice of corner. He went bottom right. We'll go next round of the FA Cup. Final kick of the game. Sorry, Watford fans. Okay, Bristol City away the next fixture. That's young Nicholas Goddard going out on loan. Still waiting for the feedback on that as I record this as to whether we kind of artificially change his height with the uh, with a live editor wait and see what you guys say about that i'm not i'm not really too sure which way you'll go actually on that one any amazing youth players alexander roland maybe leo leach probably not definitely not absolutely not and no there as well how about from the united states everybody's bloody bugged at the minute uh, that's no for you. That's a no for you. It's a no for you as well. Hello, sir. Um, he's not going to start off very well, but that potential window means that maybe with a maybe with a position change. Who are you, sir? Marcus Brown. Physically decent. Technically got good curve. Good crossing. He's a winger. Where's his finishing stat? Forty-eight. He's a winger, not a striker. Maybe because of the low defending. I'll make him a winger. Why not? It's going to be quicker, isn't it? Let's do it that way. Roland's not really growing much, but we'll wait and see. Allen, not really growing much, but we'll wait and see. And Riley, up two now. 84 to 94 potential. Really hopeful that he might be something pretty decent in a couple of seasons' time and be able to make an impact on the starting lineup. Uh, we are top of the table still as we head into this round of fixtures and we hope to be top of the table after this round of fixtures. Bristol City actually pushing for a playoff spot. Sixth in the division right now, but similar to QPR, not in great form. One win in the last five at least and three losses in that recent run as well. Harry Cornick leads the line for the Mehmeti on the left. Obviously, they're missing Alex Scott now at Bournemouth. O'Leary in goal for them. It's obviously a winnable game. Away from home. And I don't see any reason to change any of the starting eleven at this point. Crack on, boys! I love that whack. He's kept it in as well. Junior Firpo, Piro, Gellart spinning good goal scoring form today. We used the run of Nonto as a bit of a distraction. But on the weak foot, O'Leary makes the save. Great leap by Gruev there, but didn't actually get anywhere near the ball. Slot Piru through a gap, maybe, onto his left. He's a bit slow with his first touch there. We're on top, but nothing to show for it. Somerville. One, two. Give. Go. Receive. Go on, Joel. And on again. Is he onside here, Geller? He is. We lead. Joe is on fire right now. Gelhart, unstoppable. And the Leeds United juggernaut powers on. We all love Leeds. We all love Leeds. We all love Leeds. Leicester equalise against Coventry. Bit of a East Midlands derby, that Leicester Coventry. Coventry, a good team. I'd love to see Coventry back in the Prem. They were always there when I was growing up in the 90s and... It's been a, a long time since Coventry were 
in the top flight. They've been all the way down to League Two, I think, in the more recent history and back at championship level now, but certainly a club that we... Oh, that's a terrible pass. I'd love to see back in the uh, the top flight, personally. Obviously, if you're a Leicester or a Birmingham fan or something, you probably don't give a shit about whether Coventry are in the Prem or not. You'd rather Leicester and Birmingham are in the Prem. Nonto stole that away from the defender. Nonto! Should have done better. Maybe I took a little bit too long settling myself there. Good delivery. Piru! Oh! Mistake from the keeper. O'Leary can't keep it out. There's just too much power on the header. What was it we said? The Leeds United juggernaut. Power's on! Power headers on! Somerville. That's oh, Junior Furpo, sorry. Somerville was a man that was in possession. Oh, Joe, would you like another goal? You're not going to get one because O'Leary made the save. Should have buried that, really. That should be three. It's nice, actually, to dominate a game in quite such a fashion because we've had a couple of really difficult ones recently. Even the Plymouth one at the beginning of the episode where we kind of had a, a strong end to the game. It was really tough for the first hour or so against Plymouth and it wasn't as straightforward as eventually we made it look. But, and the, to be fair, the Watford game was really difficult too. Definitely we've seen a, an uptick in the quality of opponent or quality of performance from an opponent since we changed the sliders in the last episode. Still getting positive results, but it's... Harder work than it was. Piru! Missed the target. Nice run. From Knight, it will be 2 0 or it will be 2 1. Be nice actually to keep a clean sheet. I don't feel like we've done that for a little while now. Here's Pring. Nice ball inside. James. And Harry Cornick. Oh, good change of pace. Archie Gray out to Mehmeti here. And out. And final whistle. 2 0 over Bristol City away from home. We win at Ashton Gate. Boost from the fans says it's another defeat for them. We're finding a number of sides actually at the moment that are in the promotion picture, or rephrase, in the playoff picture, that are seeing their form really, really falter. Leicester won again. Middlesbrough didn't. They drew. And Southampton now six points behind. Still 19 games to go in the league. At the moment, it's ourselves and Leicester that lead the way. And at the moment, it's that 10-1 win over Rotherham that sees us top of the table. Surprisingly, only the one bid for anybody in this transfer window so far, despite our strong season. Sheffield United's bid for Ethan Ampadu rejected. And I feel like we're justified in doing so. A quick look at the Premier League and see... That's Liga, Chess. Quick look at the Premier League and see where Sheffield United are. 18th. Sheffield United, Luton and Burnley, the bottom three. Not doing great right now. Brentford and Brighton down there. Surprised to see them. Well, to be fair, Brighton are 10 points clear of the relegation zone. But still, Brighton in 16th is a surprise. Chelsea in 9th. Not a shock. And United, top of the table. That is a shock in this first season, but we'll see how things transpire over the rest of the transfer window and who we bring in at left back will be decided by you guys and what we do at centre mid and potentially in other positions as well. We might look to loan a couple in if you have any loan suggestions or maybe we look to recall players like fight. So we obviously we've loaned out players like Donnelly and Montero and Perkins etc this season. I'm quite happy with that. We're not going to look to recall Brendan Aronson or Robin Koch or Mark Rocker, etc. They're probably going to get sold in the summer. But I could recall someone like Lewis Bate, who was sent out on loan in the summer. Or Darko Giabi, who was sent out on loan on the summer, just to flesh things out. Luke Ayling, maybe. Pervader, just to add some numbers. Sam Greenwood, also. We've got options throughout the squad. Cody Drama is still only 22 at right back. So we do have, we do have some options. I still think I'd rather buy, though. Players like Cody Drama might be only 22, but if we can get a 76 or 77 rated player now, rather than a 72 rated player, then I think we probably should. I don't know. It's a weird one. Unless maybe Cody Drama becomes our right back and we move 
We move Gray into midfield. He's only two behind Gruev now. Obviously, he'd be lacking in rating, but in overall quality, he's probably good enough. It's an odd one. It's always an odd one in a situation like this because I absolutely could just go and buy players that are higher rated. But there's more of a storyline to someone working their way into the squad and building up their stature within the squad and their stats and their overall and their contribution to the team and becoming that star. That's more fun for me and I think for you guys as well than just being like, you know what? He's 72 rated. Fuck it. I'll buy someone that's 79. Wait to see what you guys say. That's all for today, though. Thank you very much for watching. Do drop the video a like if you've enjoyed. Be great to have you guys with me over on stream as well, if you would be so kind. This being uh, Monday's video that we're recording on Thursday. So do come and join me. We'll be recording the rest of the uh, transfer window, I think, today. I might have recorded it yesterday. I don't yet know. I'm trying to get my PC fixed once and for all over the weekend, so... Fingers crossed that bloody happens. I will see you in the next one regardless. Bye-bye.